You can also sign up for our newsletter while you're on our site and follow us on social media for more information on the resources and events that we're offering. So one thing I'm really excited about is our upcoming holiday mixer and silent auction, which will be held on December 2nd. It will be a great evening of virtual networking. We'll have lots of door prizes, a silent auction, and lots of fun surprises. The event benefits the Chambers Foundation, which provides scholarships for local high school students. Um, more information and details on that event can be found on our website. So if you haven't joined the Maryland Cham Central Maryland Chamber yet, we would love to have you as a new member. There's so many valuable benefits to membership and I'd be happy to discuss those with you following the program. So please stay in touch. Um, if you'd like to take a moment to add your contact information into the chat feature following the event, we will share that with all of the attendees. And if you have any questions for our speakers as we go along, you can feel free to put those in the chat box also. And we will be having some Q&A at the end of the event. Uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce our speakers for today's program. Uh, thanks to Stephen, Karen, and Linda for being with us today to share their experience. Uh, first, you will hear from Stephen Conti, who is the owner of Tokar Spa. Um, while Stephen was unable to join us today in person, he has provided his um, session as a pre-recorded video, and we will go ahead and play that for you now. This presentation. I'm super nervous, so I apologize if I'm going through my notes. Yeah, I, I see them all over the place, but I'm trying to organize from the laptop, or iPad, a phone, just to kind of see myself, and I'm not used to really being in front of the camera. I'm used to doing the work behind the scenes, um, helping people to feel good. But um, thank you guys, and thank you to Central Maryland Chamber of Commerce for hosting this event, so I really appreciate it. Um, so I'll just go ahead and get started. Um, hi, my name is Stephen Conti. I'm the owner and operator of Tokar Spa. I'm here today to talk to you about dealing with health and wellness during the pandemic, not only for yourself, but for your family and staff as well. Um, really, the goal of this presentation is to give you some tips and tricks on how to maintain your physical and mental health during this unique time that we're in. Um, hopefully, what you walk away with is a good understanding of some things that you can do right now to help you throughout uh, the rest of the day, something that you can implement into your day-to-day -day activities um, for your family and friends as well, and also for your staff. Um, a little about us, um, here we go. So I said about myself, Tokar Spa. So we're a small clinic right lo uh, located in the heart of downtown Columbia. Uh, we opened on Friday, March 13th, 2009, in the middle of a recession. So hopefully that means that's a sign of good luck. Um, I offer massage therapy services for a wide range of customers, including prenatal, post-surgical, um, sports, every, anything and everywhere in between. We do hot stone as well, um, some more of the spa, relaxing treatments, Lomi Lomi. Um, we have a pretty wide array of services we offer. Um, some of my bigger experiences are um, work for a national day spa chain, one of the top ones in the country. Um, I do work actively with the University of Maryland Athletic Department um, and also with the U.S. Soccer Federation. I've worked overseas. I've worked at the Kennedy Center with dance groups. Um, basically been all over the place. I've had a pretty good range of experiences within my industry. Um, and also, as you can see from the headshot, I definitely need a new picture because that one's old and my hair looks totally different now. But another another uh, topic for another discussion. Um, what we focus on at Tokar Spa is not just giving people massage to go home and feel good, but we give them tools and resources to continue that, to help them sustain their wellness. So that's the goal is you you, you get a treatment and we don't leave it at that. We don't leave it at the door. We follow up with you. We give you homework. We check in and make sure that your goals are being met and we provide therapy that achieves that as well. Um, I'm sure just with every business owner or company who's in the webinar now, um, you have had a big impact from COVID. Um, since March, I've lost both of my therapists. I've had to downsize my clinic. Um, and I've transformed into a solopreneur, meaning 
I'm doing everything um, from the books to payroll to treatments to emails, customer management. So I can imagine everyone else is in the same boat, dealing with the same things. You kind of feel like you're hanging off the um, edge of a boat waiting for the flood to come. So um, it's just been a stressful period. So how do you deal with the stressful period? How do you maintain both your physical and mental health during such a turbulent time? That's what I want to talk to you about today. Um, we're going to talk about the importance of healthy touch, some simple self-care techniques you can use immediately, um, creating a plan to feel good, the benefits of working together, and the benefits of sport and play for your mental and physical health. Uh, so what is touch? That's a big, easy question you think you can answer. What is touch? Touch is to handle or feel gently with the intent to understand or appreciate. So touch can be something as simple as putting your hands on someone's shoulder, something as simple as giving a neck or shoulder massage, a hug, a fist bump. That's what touch is. And we're focusing today on healthy touch um, because there's another side of touch, which is a little more um, aggressive, negative, and you kind of have different emotional associations with that. But we're going to focus on healthy touch and teach you or talk about ways you can implement healthy touch um, in your life today. Touch is our universal language. It's um, the only language that's understood across the world. Um, it's the primary means of spreading compassion, and touch is just good medicine. I would argue out of all the five senses, touch is the most important because you can't do most of your day-to-day -day tasks without it. You can't drive, you can't type, you can't text, and most importantly for me, you can't massage. Um, it's a more dynamic form of communication. It brings emotional balance as well. It shows affection, comfort, assurance, and medically speaking, it's also known to act as an antidepressant, calms anxiety, it boosts immune system functioning, and it promotes trust. Um, the benefits of touch start from the moment we're born. There are studies, and I have links at the end of the presentation, um, that show that preterm newborns who receive three 15-minute sessions of touch therapy each day over the course of five to 10 days gain 47% more weight than the premature infants who receive standard medical treatment without um, dedicated touch. So that's a pretty big benefit for babies um, in general. Uh, and we seem to lose that as we get a little older, um, touch becomes a little vilified, demonized, if you will, but it's a very important part of our makeup genetically and it's something that we need to kind of learn more about and get in touch with, I believe. Touch actually has a chemical reaction. It releases hormones, serotonin, endorphins, which are, uh, again, antidepressants. They um, promote a sense of well being. And um, the endorphin release, the great part of touch or healthy touch, it doesn't create any addiction or dependence like opioids. Um, touch deprivation can lead to increased stress and symptoms of depression, such as loneliness or aggression, which are not good. Um, touch is really fundamental for humans and going without it weakens our close relationships. In other words, touch is necessary. Um, so why are people turning to touch and, and what alternatives are there to provide healthy touch? I can speak from my industry and my perspective as massage uh, being one of those healthy forms of touch. Um, according to a survey from the American Massage Therapy Association, 78% of people are getting massage for medical reasons. 30% of consumers have used massage as a, faint, a form of pain relief. And 35 have also considered massage therapy as an alternative to opioids or other prescription pain relievers. Some of the benefits or, or some of the, the, the conditions that are treated through massage, back pain, uh, blood pressure, uh, headaches, fibromyalgia, um, the list goes on. This is just a few that um, research from the American Massage Therapy Association has provided um, 
in terms of the key uh, benefits of massage. Um, some things to think about when dealing with touch. Um, again, we lose something when we're not touched, something that's essential to our human nature. But going back to what I said before about, I guess, a negative association with touch, you have to be very mindful of who you touch, how you touch, and why you touch. So obviously, you don't want to go around touching your coworkers or people at the grocery store. Um, but think and bring some ways of how you can touch your loved ones or your friends in a safe, healthy, comfortable way that promotes connection, comfort, and hopefully even some muscular relief. Um, I put a list of some low risk touch activities. You can do a high five outside and then wipe up with hand sanitizer. You can give a hug if both people were COVID free, not in a high risk population, both wearing masks and are outside a pat on the back, a fist bump, all of those things are some ways you connect um, um, with, with maybe even coworkers or, or um, family members where you don't put anyone at risk. So some simple self-care techniques um, that we can go in and show, and this is something I actually want you guys to try right now as we're going through the presentation. I'm gonna go through a video, a stretch routine, neck, shoulder, your chest, hands, and wrists, and um, a glute stretch. So check out this video. Okay, so I'm gonna show you some stretches that you can do so from try your desk. Along if you, you don't can. need to get up, you don't need to move. We'll do that in the next section, but uh, we'll do five seconds for each segment. So we'll start with the neck. We'll go one, two, three, four, five to the left. Reset to neutral. One, two, three, four, five to the right. Reset to neutral. We go chin to chest. Five, four, three, two, one. And set to neutral. Come back. One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. Next, you'll get into a nice shoulder stretch. So we'll do some forward rotations and rear rotations. So just start out with a nice two elevation, rotation, depression. Five, one, two, three, four, five. Simple. We can work on our chest next. We can start with rep like this. One, all you're doing here is you're trying to break up that tension of you sitting at the desk with your pecs rolled in and your shoulders strained. This natural position of typing, you want to counteract that. You can then take your arms out wide. One, two, three, four, five. Next, you can work on the wrist and shoulders, I mean wrist and hands, excuse me. So. Take it from a side view here. One, two, three, four, five. Rotate. Now you don't want to push in as hard as you can just until you get resistance. Really your goal is to bend or curl your fingers in. And you'll feel the stretch on the top part of your forearm. Three, four, five, perfect. You'll switch sides. One, two, three, four, five. Rotate, one, two, three, four, five. Now you can get into a simple glute stretch. You're sitting all day on your butt, um, so your hamstrings are tight, your glutes are tight. A simple way to address that is a crossover stretch. You bring your knee over, and you go on this knee to opposite shoulder. So my right knee is going towards my left shoulder. One, two, three, four, five. Reset, other leg, one, two, three, four, five. Perfect, now you're done. You've had a little mini break. Now it's time to get up, take a lap around the office, get some more water, reset your legs and kind of get a fresh start back. Yeah, I'm trying to exit this full screen, sorry about that, okay. so. Okay, so I'm gonna, sorry. Um, 
that's a simple thing you can do every 45 minutes. I like to say 45 minutes or so, and that way you're not stuck at the desk all day cranking away work. You can just take a simple break every 45 minutes, and when you finish doing your stress routine, take a lap around the office, move a little bit, go get some water. Um, some time management techniques, you can look at the Pomodoro method. It's a self-care method um, that involves 25 minutes of work, five minute break, 25 minutes of work, five minute break for about four to five sessions, and then take a longer break in between. You can take a look and Google it to see um, what you think about that. That's um, a pretty effective um, time management technique. Um, some simple self-care in terms of the office, you can get a lumbar pillow, which takes pressure off your back. You can get a footstool that takes pressure off your low back and glutes, a monitor stand, which raises the uh, level of the uh, monitor to eye level. You want to get a desk light. There are certain desk lights that actually have a timer. There's one, the Lux LED has a timer and a dimmer. So you push a button and every 60 minutes, the light just shuts off. So that's a pretty visual way to stop and make sure you take a break. You can get an ergonomic keyboard that pushes your hands out wide, wrist pads that help keep the posture um, of your wrists in a neutral position, and also some blue light glasses. That's a new rage that's going on now, but they really do help reduce digital eye strain. Um, okay, so the next section talk about making a plan to feel great. Um, if you woke up and tried to accomplish your plans on a whim, how do you think that would go? I can give you a specific example of my 14 month old daughter. When we don't have a plan in the morning to get her going, the day becomes chaotic. She gets a little stressful. She's running around, we're running around. It's not a good idea to not make a plan for your own health and wellness. So what does that mean? Um, first, you can start off by planning your week. Decide what's the most important thing in your upcoming week. I have to finish this presentation, I have to call a customer, I have to close the sale. Figure that out, write everything out, write your appointments, deadlines, meetings. That way, visually, you can have a good view of what's going on for your schedule. And then you can plan out the day. Um, what are you gonna do um, the next day? How is your morning gonna go? What do you wanna accomplish? And then make a specific plan for what you're gonna do for your physical and emotional health. Am I gonna take a meditation break? Am I going to journal, which is also a really creative outlet for your, for your um, mental health? Maybe I'll go to the gym in the evening. I can do some push-ups at home. Whatever you want to do, you can do. But if you have a plan that makes it a lot more likely that it will actually get done. Um, speaking of plans, we do have a self-care action plan that we've created. It lives on our website, tokarspa.com backslash forms. It's a comprehensive plan. It, it gets you to look at your activities on a day-to-day -day basis, some of your pitfalls, and it helps you create the schedule. That's one tool, there's millions of tools out there, but this is a free resource if you're interested. Um, so making a plan is a great idea. Um, working together. Teamwork is the ability to work together towards a common vision, the ability to direct individual accomplishment towards organizational objectives. It is a fuel that allows common people to attain uncommon results. Things are just better when you work together. So um, the benefits of thinking as a group for goal setting, there's motivation, there's accountability, which is really is one of the main um, pieces here. But there's also satisfaction when you as a team or a unit accomplish a goal. So going at your health goals by yourself if you're a highly motivated individual, if you're really on top of things, that's great. I am not. I can't work out by myself. I can't um, motivate myself to get up and go jog by myself or do anything health related without some accountability, without someone able to hold me accountable. And I understand and realize that about myself enough to know that if I want to be successful, I need to involve others to make it a group project. And I think that's something that could be potentially helpful for you guys as well. Um, so some examples of how you can use this group think to work together. Um, you can do partner stretching. So what partner stretching is, 
is you get a yoga mat, you go lay down on the floor and you stretch your partner out. You can do your kids, you can do your husband, your wife, your cousin, friends. When you stretch someone else, the person who's being stretched can relax. I found it's a much more enjoyable experience than trying to wrap your leg around a towel, use a stretching strap. It really is therapeutic to get stretched. Um, it's easier also to focus on your limits when you're being stretched and not doing the stretching. Um, another thing you could do to work together to achieve health goals is to do a couples massage. And I don't mean couples massage in the clinic or in a spa, I mean at home. So literally you have a chair that you can sit on, walk behind, massage, shoulders, simple stuff. Some of the benefits are connection with your partner um, and just really feeling good. What I would advise if you do this, and we're going to have a whole series that we're going to put on our website and YouTube page showing you how to do this. Um, limit your time to five or 10 minute increments. Don't worry about trying to be a professional massage therapist. Just take a positive attempt and, and stop when you're limited. So instead of trying to do exotic moves where you got your elbow in someone's back, you're doing these stretches, keep it simple. When you're tired, stop. And um, just don't try anything you're uncomfortable with. And don't push yourself too far because this is something that will be a tool you can go back to. You know, hey, honey, my hands really hurt. I've been typing at the computer all day. My neck is killing me. Any sort of touch to help that out is always a good thing. Um, and lastly, sports and play during the pandemic. I know a lot of things are shut down. Um, you, know, you can't go to a sport game. Um, but there are ways you can enjoy sports when you're at home. Um, in terms of the mental benefits, you know, sports is a, a proven stress reliever. It teaches you the value of teamwork, how to deal with setbacks, um, improve cognition for children, reduce short-term uh, feelings of anxiety for adults. Um, and it can also reduce um, depression. So that's some of the mental benefits of sport and play. Um, the physical benefits, better night's sleep, weight management, um, stronger bones. You can improve your functional capacity. You can prevent yourself from being a fall risk. Um, and you just have a chance to live longer. It reduces the risk of you dying from cardiovascular disease and other cancers. And just overall being physically active gives you a boost in your day. It gives you energy and gives you a more positive outlook in life. Um, so try to find some ways that you can get physically engaged while also being safe in social distance. You can kick a soccer ball. You can throw a football to a neighbor or your kid. You can play catch with your dog, take a walk every day, um, pick up a new activity. You can try biking, but all the bikes are sold out. I tried that on my own. It didn't work. You can jog, you can do some burpees, anything really that you're able to do to get yourself moving and to stay active is a positive thing. So just think of ways you can do that and think of ways that um, you can get your partner involved or others involved to make it a fun activity where it doesn't seem like a chore. All right, so we're wrapping up here now, but our next steps, um, think and plan of ways that you can Map out your day, um, find ways to introduce healthy touch into your life. Um, take time for yourself. Make sure you're doing your uh, breaks or your partial breaks at work and just connect with one another in a positive way. Call a friend, um, email a buddy, do a FaceTime session. You can do a socially distance um, happy hour. Um, it's a ton of things you can do to kind of keep your mindset and your physical health um, available during this pandemic. Um, if you have any questions, you can reach me directly. My email's here. You can go to our website. You can also follow us on social media. Um, we're very available. Um, so I hope this was a benefit. I really appreciate the opportunity to get in front of you guys. And I hope you have a great day. Thank you. So that was wonderful. It's it's funny. It's so easy to do some of the stretching exercises, but I don't even think about it. But like Carla mentioned in the chat, I do feel better already. So 
Thanks to Stephen. He was sad he couldn't join us today, but um, if you're interested in getting in touch, uh, we're happy to share his information. So next we're going to hear from Karen. Karen is the owner of Salt on Main Wellness Center in Laurel. And I can say I have been there to visit myself and um, experience the dry salt therapy room, and I'm a huge fan. Um, they have salt therapy rooms and they offer halo therapy, which can detoxify the respiratory system, help with things like allergies and asthma, helps with skin conditions, relieves stress, and much more. Uh, they also offer detox programs through foot baths and a sauna. So all kinds of great things that Karen's going to tell us about. Um, so now I will turn the program over to Karen, who can tell us more about herself and her wellness tips. Thanks, Karen. Okay, let me uh, get this screen shared. There we go. All right, well, thanks, Christy. You uh, gave some of the information I was gonna start with, so I'll just let it be with that. But just so you know, we are coming up on our one year anniversary. Um, so we're gonna do some celebrations at the end of this month, um, especially with uh, Small Business Saturday. We're gonna have a lot of free events and stuff. Um, coming up and we are the city of Laurel's first dry salt therapy center. And there are only about seven centers in Maryland. There may be one or two that have popped up since I started doing all my research. Um, so it's not a very um, um, well-known type of service in the wellness industry, but I think it's getting more and more, um, more and more popular. Um, one more thing that we do offer that Christy didn't mention is we have an ion cleanse uh, foot detox uh, machines. Um, we um, can do them in groups of two or four. Um, and we also have a deep tissue massage chair. So those are some of the things that we have here. Um, and then uh, one more thing that we're going to start um, by the first of the year is uh, yoga nidra classes. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that today and dry salt therapy get my screen where I am slideshow. Sorry. You don't have to see the back. All right. So self-care. So Stephen told us a lot about that. Um, but we're going to talk a little bit about um, some activities that you can do for yourself in addition to the things Stephen talked about. Um, so stress is extremely high right now and self-care needs to be an important part of our lives so that we can keep ourselves healthy. Um, and two activities that you can add to your self-care regime will help reduce stress and boost your immune system. One is I am yoga nyadra, and the second is halotherapy. And 77% of workforce reports being burnt out um, with this new age of uh, being on the computer all day long instead of face-to-face, -face. Um, it really adds to that. And stress can reduce your problem-solving abilities and your memory by 50%. So one, um, one thing you can do is learn and do yoga niadra. I'm currently taking a certification course so that we can offer it here at the job. My partner and I, Lindsay, are both doing it. Um, it's a sleep-based relaxation technique, and it takes us to the place just between being awake and being asleep. And that's where you naturally disengage from stress-producing thoughts and allowing your body to naturally and deeply restore itself. The benefits are it allows your body to restore itself, balance excess stress, and you're combining the benefits of meditation, relaxation, and tensions. And you're effortlessly, effort, effortlessly, sorry, that's a big word for me to say, takes you to a deep relaxation where you can change your relationship to pain, stressful situations, and habits. Um, and most people think of yoga as something where you're doing all these poses and all these, you know, exercises. But this yoga is a rest yoga where anybody can do it because you're laying down. Um, and it can help boost productivity, focus, restore energy and health. It can address stress-related issues in a simple, cost-effective manner with the I am yoga Nyadra, everyone regardless of age or fitness level can benefit. And if you can breathe and lay down, these techniques will work for you. Um, so I actually had only done one, maybe two Nyadras before I um, 
learned about this course um, and I thought it would be a nice addition to our salt therapy practice here because it really can be done anywhere. You know, people can do it at home, they can do it here, um, and we're gonna offer private sessions to help people customize what it is they wanna get out of the yoga nyatra. So we talked a little bit at the beginning. Can you guys hear that? Okay, I guess not. So salt therapy has not been known by many in the United States. There's only about 500, maybe 600 centers in the United States. It is known around the world. Um, there are some really big, beautiful caves in Poland and Italy and a couple other countries. Um, and dry salt therapy has been medically recognized in Europe for over 50 years. And it's the treatment of breathe, it's for treating breathing conditions and skin problems. Um, the term halotherapy came about where they were trying to replicate what was happening in the caves. What happens in the caves is called sleotherapy because there's no machinery involved. It's just the way the environment creates the aerialization of the salt in that environment. But the problem with the caves is it takes a really long time for you to get the same benefit as you do with this man made generated halotherapy. So halotherapy is basically a machine. It's kind of like a little coffee grinder attached to a fan where you grind up pharmaceutical grade salt and you mist it into the room. So it can be done in different fashions. Like we have a barn, we call it a barn or big room, um, where it mists. It's a stronger machine. And then we have a smaller machine in our smaller room. And then we also have a bed where you can actually lay down. So the bed you can do 20, 30 minutes. And in the small room, we do about 20 minutes. And in the barn, we do 45 because it takes a longer period of time. So if you were to go to one of these caves, you probably want to be in there a couple of hours for you to gain the same benefit as we do in a short period of time in these rooms that we have created. Um, so Dr. Felix was the one that observed that the miners did not have any respiratory issues or lung disease. Um, so they believed the cause of their lung health um, was the cave air that made many dry salt particles. My screen frozen. Hmm. Am I gone? Christy, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, so it moved. All right. So salt is hygroscopic. It absorbs water from its surroundings. Um, it helps remove pollen and environmental irritants from your sinus cavity, and it helps reverse the chronic inflammation and slow down mucus production. So I have a visual here. So you inhale the salt. It goes into your sinuses and your lungs, and the smaller the particles they are, the deeper into your lungs they'll go. So that's why we use these machines that grind the salt up really small so that it can get further in, into the deeper tissues of your lungs. And when it does that, it removes the excess fluid from the sinuses and the tissues, which will then reduce the inflammation because inflammation just is, has water in the tissues. So you're moisturizing the tissues, you're thinning the mucus, and then it breaks down into tiny particles. And then you will, once it's thinned out, it drains, you blow your nose, you cough it up. And by doing that, you're removing the pollen, the dust, and the other contaminants. And if anyone's ever heard of neti pots, that's a similar process because you're using a liquid salt and you're getting it up just into your, your nasal cavity. It's not going as deep as your lungs, as where the dry salt will go. But it also, the neti pots also help reduce inflammation and it slows down the mucus production in the sinuses. So the end result, you're, you're helping to reverse any chronic inflammation and slow down mucus productions. Um, I've had people tell me that um, they hadn't breathed that deeply or that you know, dry in years. They didn't realize that salt could actually help them with that. I have some people that come three times a week because when they don't, they just can't breathe. And they're all, you know, they're all snotty and not mucusy and stuff and they, they just like to have it be dry. Um, 
So, but everybody's different. I have some people that also just come once a month because they know after a couple of weeks it's time to come back. So everybody has a different level of what they like for their bodies. Um, so salt therapy, as we've said, cleanses the sinuses and the respiratory airways, helping reduce inflammation, and it also kills bacteria. So in this um, in this stage of the world where we are worried about our respiratory health, this is a way to boost your respiratory health and keep yourself healthy and keep yourself um, from not being subject to some of the viruses that are coming around. Um, so I said this a little while ago, but we take pharmaceutical grade salt, we warm it up, we put it into the machine and the machine grinds it into tiny particles and then a fan blows it into the room. And these nanoparticles are what we inhale and they can get as small as five microns. And those very small pieces are actually the ones that actually go into, deep into your lung. Um, and we also have a portable unit that people can rent and take home. So they can actually do uh, a salt therapy at their home. I have people that rent it for a week and you know do it every day and then uh, and then they take a couple weeks off and then they do it again for a week. So that's an alternative to coming out. Um, and salt is a natural disinfectant. Um, we find the healthiest forms of salt are Himalayan and Dead Sea salt because they contain um, 75 or more elements and trace minerals that are found in the body. Um, so that's why it's good to eat different forms of salt. Um, and salt therapies are not approved by the FDA to treat diseases. We can say that many customers of the salt room have improved respiratory function, improved skin conditions, improved sinus health, and improved energy. Um, and these are the five areas that salt therapy um, people have um, benefit. Skin, physical fitness, lungs, emotional health, and sinus relief. So for skin health, it, you know, have you ever gone to the beach and been there for two weeks and at the end of the two weeks, your skin just feels so luxuriously soft from all the salt air. Um, so we have a bed where you can actually lay and get into, you know, like shorts and a tank top um, and let as much skin as possible be shown. Um, so that if you have any pro problematic areas of your body for, uh, for the skin, um, you can use the salt to help uh, reduce that. Um, and physical fitness, people that are competitive or professional athletes seeking to breathe easier during exercise or improve, improved athletic performance, endurance, recovery time through increased strength, lung function, and, and your O2 saturation. Um, so uh, athletes, can really benefit from salt therapy. And then lung health. Um, how therapy can provide relief um, for a wide variety of respiratory conditions. Um, asthma, bronchitis, allergies, um, even help um, slow down the length of time it takes to get through a cold or flu. Um, I've had um, clients that were diagnosed with bronchitis, they were taking their antibiotic from their doctor, but they came in and used the bed and instead of it taking them four or five weeks to stop coughing, it took them maybe seven days, 10 at the most. Um, but it's just a much faster process, you're helping it. And I even have one, one or two people that are actually smokers that are coming in because they just know that their lungs really aren't doing all that well. So they're trying to detox them a little bit. Emotional health. Halotherapy um, provides some symptomatic relief for seasonal affective disorder because the way seasonal affective disorder works, they have those sun lamps because they're actually, um, they're actually providing um, a change of ions. So they release, um, they release negative ions into the air and then they help um, create a, a different reaction in your, your brain and your body. So, so using salt is just like using those, um, those sun lamps. So that creates a soothing environment. Um, and sinus relief. Pure salt air helps the sinus issues by reducing inflammation and swelling as a result of breathing, breathing those tiny little particles. Um, so, and like I said before, the FDA 
says I can't say that they are, um, you know, treating diseases, but people use it as an adjunct to their um, allopathic uh, medicine. And here's just a picture of what a normal airway would look like, and then a picture of one that um, has cystic fibrosis, where there's lots of inflammation and the pathways are all narrowed, um, and the salt can help um, reduce that inflammation. And so we need to take deep breaths. So deep breaths are like love notes to your mind and your body. And that's all I have. Great, thank you. Um, that was a great presentation. I feel like I'm breathing better, like repeatedly <laughs> already. And, and as I mentioned, I have been to Karen's um, Karen salt, uh, the barn you called it, the big salt room, and absolutely loved it. I can't wait to get back. Um, so I am a happy client of Karen's, and Thanks, <laughs> hope, to visit, hope to visit you again soon. Cool. Um, so our final speaker today is Linda Pencala. Linda owns Optimum Health for Life, is an LMT, an author, and a wellness coach, and she's featured in many articles and podcasts all over the region. So you may recognize her name. Um, she teaches on many topics, including health and well-being, self-care, and heart health. She works in massage therapy, hands-free massage, essential oils, and more. And she works at the Howard County Holistic Center in Columbia. Linda has been involved with the Chamber for many years, and we're so glad to have her here today. So I'll turn it over to you, Linda. Thank you. I'll share my screen. Thank you, Christy, for putting this on for everyone. I appreciate that. In this day and age of uh, COVID and stress, as you, we all know, the stress levels are so high. Um, it's important for all of us to kind of like um, kick it up a notch, if you will, as um, Emerald, Emerald would say, and really um, dive deep into what we could do to stay sane, to stay healthy, and live robustly, despite the amount of stress that we're all on and in. Um, so as a massage therapist over 30 years now, it is an honor to be able to help people um, feel their bodies in neutral on the massage table. And then once they go out into the world to begin to pay attention, like Stephen said, is not just about coming in to get the massage and feel the power of the essential oils. It's learning and knowing how you can really embrace new thinking and new choices and really start paying attention to your lifestyle choices. So when we began this pandemic in March, by about April, as a chamber member, they wanted me, our, our group wanted me to speak about um, wellness. And so I wrote this article called Navigating the New Waters of Wellness and it was published in Your Health Magazine. And I thought that I would turn this into a, a short little a PowerPoint. It's only a few slides. And if you see on the left, it's about tips. And I felt that by about April, May, people needed to have some kind of tips to understand how they could um, begin going into the spring and summer with this. None of us knew it would be this intense, but now it is. So we all have to figure out how we can navigate these new waters. So let me do the slideshow. So it begins with the T. The T stands for tangible. Get my screen out here. So like Stephen did, I would like to begin with um, all of us doing a 358 breathing. So in my book, I speak about a few breathing techniques, but this is really easy. And so what we do is we inhale for three, pause, hold for five, and then you exhale through the mouth for eight seconds. So let's all sit back in our chairs, wherever you are in front of your computers. And um, with your eyes open or closed, let's do this exchange of breathing a few times, two or three. Inhale three, hold five, and exhale for eight through your mouth. And it, it could be through pursed lips like this. If you really want to accentuate the exhale, you could do it through your teeth like this. So that way it goes slowly and it's emptying all the toxins from your lungs. So let's all 
try to do three, five, eight breathing. So the reason why this is important is because when we are under stress and we are um, navigating all of these new roles that we all have, we all take very short, shallow breaths. And what that does is that decreases the amount of oxygen for our heart, brain, and organs, along with every single cell in your body. So this is a sweet, simple little trick you can have in your toolbox while you're sitting at your desk driving, standing there washing dishes, cutting vegetables, whatever, you could do three, five, eight breathing and you would feel so much better. And um, in my nine pillars of heart disease prevention, uh, one of them, number three, is movement is medicine. And it truly is a medicine because at this point in time, we all have to get outside, smell that fresh air, walk, run, play, garden, and breathe. So when I'm giving massages and I do have to wear my face mask, in between clients, I go outside and I take some really deep breaths because I feel I need fresh air because it is a lot to wear a mask and do physical work at the same time. And I used to be a jockey back in the day. And when I watch races now and I see jockeys having to wear masks while they're racing and you know riding the horse, I find that incredible because it's a really, really high impact aerobic activity riding a racehorse going 40 miles an hour. So I couldn't even imagine doing that. So when I'm going to moan to myself about wearing a mask, I do think about that, that it could be a lot more intense. So staying hydrated is really important because many of us aren't doing what we used to do, sitting at our desk, going to see you know, your friend Carol down the hall and let's have a cup of, a cup of coffee, glass of water, whatever, or go get water with you know, you're moving around the office. So we all have to be more intentional because most people are dehydrated. So it's drink half your body weight in ounces. And that's an important thing to realize because it's important for digestion, elimination and clear thinking. So should you have a headache or should you really feel not quite right? Go drink some water. That's the easiest, most simplest thing you could do is drink water. So regularly view the urine color chart which when you get this recording, you could do it because I just don't want anything to go wrong, but I will tell you exactly the color you're looking for. So you want it to be a light straw yellow, very light, that means you're hydrated. Now you need to turn around and look at your urine to figure out whether you're hydrated or not. If you're yellow, it's borderline. But if you're deep yellow, you're dehydrated. And if you're amber, brown, or red, you either ate beets or have a little blood in your urine or you need to go to your doctor if you're that red. So these are important because your urine tells you a lot about hydration. And so um, it's important daily to drink half your body weight in ounces. And even though I know Carla mentioned in the chat, you might not like drinking water. Um, Karen and I both work with Young Living Essential Oils and um, I'll show you this later. The Citrus Fresh is a great um, essential oil blend of citrus oils. You could put one drop in your water. So it flavors your water, hopefully not in a plastic bottle, and it allows you to drink water even if you might not like drinking water or the taste of water. So you spice it up with essential oils. Keeping your immune system, uh, oh, monitor alcohol intake is important. So that can dehydrate you and can impact your heart's rhythm. So back in the day when I had AFib, when I had my medical moment, and that was the whole impetus for me writing the pause to relax ladies for robust heart health, um, some parts of it could have been dehydration. And so what I recommend and I suggest for people that do drink alcohol, be sure you drink water with that alcohol. It's really important because from my cardiologist, I understood and learned about the heart is impacted by alcohol and the alcohol can impact your sinus rhythm or the normal beating of your heart. So that's really good to know as many people probably are drinking more alcohol 
from the stress and eating more junk food and all the things people do when they're stressed out. But it's really important to really pay attention. Keeping your immune system is so strong, not uh, keeping your immune system strong is important, not just to keep the virus away, but to just keep it strong the entire winter so that you don't succumb to anything. So that is helped by less sugar. Sugar really depletes your immune system. You need to eat more garlic, vitamin C and D. Spinach is really important. Almonds, green tea, ginger, cinnamon. I, I like to put cinnamon in my coffee grinds. So I take cinnamon oil or I take um, powdered cinnamon and I put it in my little K cup and I put the either of those two in and then I get this cinnamon infused into my coffee. So I don't have to, you know, pour it in or anything. And oregano and thyme are important. Zinc, citrus fruits, all citrus fruits, and red peppers, sunflower seeds, and broccoli are all supportive for your immune system. And um, in my book, I talk about the, the importance and the power of touch, just like Stephen mentioned in his great presentation. It's so important to hug and to touch other people. And so if you are in a home where you can and you do hug and touch people, I would suggest really kicking it up a notch. And for those that can, we're supposed to get 12 hugs a day for our health. And in this day and age of our COVID, um, sad to say, many of us aren't getting as many hugs as we truly need and deserve. So touch and hug those you can for connection, reducing stress, raising your oxytocin level, feeling safe and affirmations of love and happiness. Now, oxytocin is the opposite of cortisol, the stress hormone. That's important to know because you want to do anything and everything you can to improve and raise up your oxytocin levels. And hugging is just one wonderful way. So that's tangible of the tips for navigating these new waters of wellness. This is the informational for the I part. So addressing stress and paying attention to these warning signs. Should you have headaches, pain, insomnia, not communicating very well to people, anxiety, worry, fear, or sadness, it's important to really begin to pay attention to these. Why? Is because all of these can get actually worse if you don't kind of nip it in the bud right now. And so um, when you do, it can totally shift a lot chemically. And stress is all made up of chemicals from cortisol. We'll talk about that next one. These results increase in the production of stress hormones, cortisol, adrenaline, norepinephrine that cause inflammation in the body. And the norepinephrine is what is get, gets pushed out from the adrenals um, when we are under stress and our body is calling on more energy to get through that stressful period. The norepinephrine raises our heart rate to get us through that stressful period. The bad news is that if we don't get through that stressful period and it all gets turned back off, then you have an increase of adrenaline, cortisol, and norepinephrine. So guess what happens then? Then your heart rate increases on a consistent basis, and then what happens? You get high blood pressure. And then the inflammation causes heart disease in the body. So attend to and intentionally calm your nervous system with your vagus nerve. Breathing, relaxation, aromatherapy massages, yin yoga, meditation, and prayer, all to raise your oxytocin levels for homeostasis and balance. And do you know that when you pray and meditate, that raises your megahertz of frequency, your electrical frequency in your body, 10 megahertz of frequency. And then when you are fearful, negative, angry, all those negative emotions, that lowers your body's frequency, 12 megahertz of frequency. So that's important to know because you really want to spend more time on the positive end with prayer, meditation, mindfulness, quieting down your central nervous system. So here, sleep is important, seven to eight hours with no blue light from any or all your devices. I'm really, really firm about that. And I do it myself um, prior to going to bed because you have you know, all of that blue light like Stephen mentioned. So roughly one to two hours prior to going to sleep, don't look at any of that. Apply essential oils of lavender and cedarwood, as well as Young Living's roll-on blends, especially peace and calming, stress away, and tranquil. I have tranquil right here. I don't know. Here, here we go. This is uh, tranquil. These are easy to roll on 
This is cedarwood, lavender, Roman chamomile. And the other one is stress away. You could roll it on your neck, your heart, behind your ears, and the bottom of your feet to support deep rest and relaxation. Why this is better than drugs or alcohol is because your body uh, receives it better and it's a more natural uh, product of the earth and of nature. So it goes into your body easily. So that's the I. The P is practical. Embrace intentional gratitude, paying attention to your heart health. Daily writing down three things for which you're grateful. And this is key because the opposite of grateful is just being upset about everything. So a great tool is going to HeartMath Institutes. It's heartmath.org. They have a beautiful quick coherence technique for adults. And it can be for children as well. And all it is is putting your hand on your heart and accessing an emotion of compassion, appreciation, and love and breathing into your heart that emotion. You could do it just for a minute or two. It doesn't take long. If hyper-focusing on the negative, again, you could restore balance or three, five, eight breathing. Being more mindful and present to reset your mind. So here's the deal. In my research for my book, I read a lot about um, what animals do. And when they are stressed out and saw an animal's running for its life and by a predator and it lives, what do they do when they try to rest and restore? They go to a cave and they just sit there and they shake. They just shake. They have to shake it out of their bodies. All of that intense cortisol and norepinephrine, all the chemical process that happened to that animal because it was running for its life. So I really offer this to each of you that we are all running for our lives right now. And we each need to embrace at least one, two, or three of these tools that you're hearing today so that you don't succumb to cardiovascular illness and the stress of all that we're going through. So intentionally relax daily to disengage your sympathetic nervous system of fight, flight, and freeze. Try deep breathing, mindful meditation massages, which is what I created recently that I do at night for groups of, any groups of teachers, uh, businesses, employees, any faith group. Uh, we meet for an hour and you smell lavender that I send to you, a little sample of lavender, and I take you through a guided meditation. And that's important because you could feel in your own home, in your PJs or your sweatpants with a blanket, the deep power of a mindful meditation massage. So. Essential oils, meditation, prayer, and chiropractic visits also help your central nervous system. And then raise your frequency by praying and turning to your faith to restore calm, peace, harmony, and stillness. And then the last one is smile. That's so important, and the research is really strong on this. Smiling engages many facial muscles, resulting in the brain sending via the neural messaging system those happy hormones of dopamine and serotonin through your body. These hormones impact wellness and joy. And in turn, this reduces your stress and positively impacts your happiness and contentment. So try this tonight. Lie in bed. And I want you to just put a little smile on. Think of the day. I don't care if it was good or bad. It doesn't matter. You need to send those messages and get the dopamine and serotonin. So just put a little smile line there on your pillow and smile about the day. You'll sleep better. So choose to smile more helps those heightened emotions that can raise blood pressure, tension, and physical discomfort. Smiling during those short-lived stress diminishes the impact of the stress response. So smile more, think less. And the article that I got this research from is called There's Magic in Your Smile. I didn't put the articles um, or the author's name in there, but in my book, I note her article in there, and you're welcome to find that in my book. So watch your favorite funny movie, comedian, or show. So you laugh heartily, which offers health benefits for your heart, brain, and blood. And that's important because, you, again, you want to increase your oxygen content. And then connect with family or friends via gathering on FaceTime, Zoom, Skype, Google Meet, Hangouts, WhatsApp, in order to connect, smile, and laugh. I like to also add to that to uh, walk with people walk outside. That's an important thing to get that oxygen in there. So this is my Wise Heart Health for program that I created. I can offer PowerPoints to companies and businesses, again, groups of people, 
It's called Wise Heart Health for Life, and it's a PowerPoint. And here's my book, which is a wonderful resource for anyone, men or women. I did write it for women because what I found out through my medical moment of AFib was that we all know that heart disease is our number one killer men and women. But what really spoke to me was that in the 80s, us women surpassed men of dying of heart disease. And every 38 seconds, a woman dies of cardiovascular illness. And every 100 seconds, a woman has a heart attack. So that really um, was the impetus to educate people more, to have a small little resource book. It's only seven chapters, a quick read, but this resource guide will give you stress management tools for life way beyond COVID. So you can get my book on Amazon, Kindle, Apple, Barnes and Noble, and Nook. And if you'd like to buy um, more than one for your staff or employees, you can contact me and you could get it through Outskirts Press, my publisher. And it's been about a year. So I want to just celebrate that my book's been out for about a year. And I really celebrate that people now can read it for stress tools because we all need all the help we can get. So thank you for your hearts, for your presence. Thank you to the chamber and Christy and Olivia for bringing us all together. And I thank both the presenters, uh, Stephen and Karen, for your hearts that serve as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, Linda. That was terrific. Um, so now we do have a little time for some questions. You can, if you have a question you'd like to ask at this time to uh, Linda or Karen, still on the call as well, um, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and ask away. Well, I really like the idea of those oils. Tell me more, Ms. Ms. Linda. <laughs> Well, essential oils have been around. Karen and I have been with Young Living Essential Oils for over 16 years, and I can't speak highly enough about them. And this is the little citrus fresh essential oil that I was telling you about. And this is just a collection, and there's a vitality line that Young Living has. The importance of that is that you don't buy essential oils at retail stores where you buy shoes and pocketbooks, things like that. I won't name names, but the important thing is that you buy essential oils from a company that has good integrity and has good sourcing. And the FDA has approved for this vitality line to be ingested. So I say that because you really have to be your own best advocate when you choose to use essential oils. Karen and I both were and we still are with Young Living. So they are a very easy, simple way to get you to a state where you wanna go. So when, uh, when I taught yesterday, I was on TV yesterday and I, mentioned about nasal inhalers. So you can make your own nasal inhaler. You could be sitting at your desk if you're a little tired and you have to another hour to be on the Zoom. You make one of peppermint and you inhale it, both nostrils, and it goes right into your brain, into your olfactory bulb, which is behind your eye, into the limbic portion of your brain really quick. That's how it works. So it's simple, it's fast, it's safe. You don't need a prescription and it's there for you at your fingertips. Karen could probably add a little bit more to that. <laughs> I actually have little salt inhalers that have uh, eucalyptus in them. So you can mix salt with it to hold the uh, oil. And this is one of those. I have that on my desk because I got it from Karen. Mm -hmm. She makes it for you. So she put the oil, you unscrew the bottom. She put the oil in the top and there's salt in here. So it's brilliant. It's really brilliant. Cool. But what I like to share about Karen's um, salt studio, I was there when I was going through a skin issue and I laid on her salt bed and it really helped my skin so much. It was amazing. And what's beautiful about it is I was just there with um, bra and underwear and you're laying on warmth, warm, really warm salt. And then she closes the top and you're in this beautiful little cocoon, if you will, all by yourself and I think you played music that day I think it's yeah. about a half an hour and it's so relaxing no one's touching you no one's doing anything to you but you're in your own little space and you can do your own little affirmations or prayer or meditation while you're there and then Karen sets a timer she leaves and she comes back and she gets you out and, and it's beautiful it's absolutely beautiful 
I like that she described it as a cocoon because some people say it looks like a coffin. <laughs> no, I didn't want to say that. <laughs> didn't like want to say that. Somebody called it a terrarium the other day. <laughs> Sounds very relaxing. It is. Oh, it is. It is. Yeah, I think you know that it's it's a really tough time that we're living in, and I and I think you know what you were speaking of is just so important. You know, I, I think we just kind of put it off and put it off, and it's like no, you know, we've got to be aware. Some of those things that we're feeling, you know, if we get a headache or if we're just really stressed and we're anxious, um, it's just so key to just slowing it down a notch and just kind of like you were saying, just breathe or just you know affirmations and, and, and saying, Hey, you know, I'm worth it because I got to keep going. And there's nobody that's going to do that unless you're kind of keenly aware of some of your own symptoms. Mm -hmm. um, and let me just share time. this as, Oh, sorry. You're, you're not finished. Sorry. No, I'm good. <laughs> okay. When Stephen was talking about light, I was like, Oh, I should show everyone my light. So over the years of being a wellness uh, catalyst, I talk about art light. So when you're sitting at your desk, people that have a sad seasonal affective disorder, having good light is important. Now, Ot Light did that for us. And so this is my Ot Light that's on my desk. It has really nice ability to wax and wane with me. But I love the light here. So you could change the color of the light. And this is all on Amazon. This is like 40 bucks. So when I'm sitting here typing away, I'm getting full spectrum light from the sun through this bulb. And that's important because artists use this, women that do counted cross stitch, people that need really good light, use Ot Light. You could get a stand of Ot Light or you could get this little desk lamp, which is really good. And the, uh, one more thing I didn't share, Christy, real quick, is in my book, I shared the vagus nerve breathing. And so I encourage each of you to access your vagus nerve by putting a finger in your ear. This is what I do during the mindful meditation massage. Put a finger in your ear to access the <clears throat> higher branch of your vagus nerve. And you inhale and you exhale. Ah, and that's it. That's all you have to do. Inhale and exhale and you exhale. Ah. Why that's important is because your vagus nerve right around this area and in your brain likes humming. So you could do ah. Um, and the vagus nerve loves that and it resonates beautifully with it. And why that's important is because when we're under a lot of stress and the cortisol levels are high, it's the vagus nerve telling the body to calm down that really helps us rest and reset. But if we never access that vagus nerve, then cortisol gets to rule supreme. That's why that's important. I always forget to do that. <laughs> that's a great tip. I'm gonna try that later too. Um, what other questions do we have? Any of our guests? And if you don't have them now, you can always reach out to one of our great panelists later. I'm sure they'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Um, one thing we will do after the event, I know I would love to watch this whole program again just to kind of retain some of these tips. Um, it's hard to kind of cram it all into about an hour, hour and a half program. So we're going to send out a video link to all of the registered guests so that you can watch it again or go back and reference it. You could share it with friends that you think um, may benefit from all of our experts. So last call for any other questions. Okay. Well, I'm not hearing any. So um, thank you all so much for joining us today. Uh, this has been such a great session and I'm just feeling more relaxed and centered and, um, you know, it kind of puts everything in perspective to hear these, these great tips. So um, thank you so much to all of our presenters, uh, Stephen from Tokar Spa, Karen from Salt on Main, and Linda from Optimum Health for Life. We um, will continue to have other sessions just like this one. Um, of all kinds of different topics. We try to do something every week or every other week. So you can stay tuned to our website if you'd like to uh, hear about our upcoming events. You can also check out prior sessions if you missed any. There's all kinds of topics um, that you can access for free right on our web website, which is centralmarylandchamber.org. Uh, thanks again to all of you for joining us. You'll get an email from me a little later today with the link to the presentation um, and everyone's contact information. Thanks
thanks so much to our experts for sharing their knowledge with us. This has been really wonderful. So I hope you all have a great day. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you.